Morning everyone, so I'm Chloe, I work at Rothamsted Research um, with uh, a group of weed scientists, um, but I also did my PhD at Coventry University's Centre for Agroecology, Water and Resilience, where a lot of these ideas came from. Um, what I'd like to do today is share with you um, the results of a review that we've done where we've drawn together all the recent developments in weed ecology, and we've tried to use these to identify the most promising directions for weed management and weed science. Having just talked to Sarah, I will preface this with this paper, well, this um, story was is told for weed scientists, like, come on guys, this is where we need to be going with our research. So I don't have all the answers on how we might do this. What I am hoping is that there might be some inventive growers and farmers in the audience who might have some suggestions that can help us. Um, the other sort of point behind doing a, a big picture talk about how weeds work um, and how they interact with your farm is that in every farm, in every context, um, the tools that are going to work are different and the tools that are available to you for that management are different. So hopefully by getting an up-to-date understanding of everything we know about how weeds work, um, that will help people to make the best decisions in their own context. Um, I'd like to start with the statement that the future of weed management is coexistence. We need to learn to live with the weeds. Um, and just to back that up with a few facts, weeds are very good at getting away from any way that we want to control them. So there's lots of weeds all over the world now that are resistant to almost all of the herbicides that we have. But it's not just the chemical guys getting things wrong. Um, soil, uh, so tillage is a major reason that our topsoil keeps leaving our fields and ending up in the rivers. Um, and the better we get at killing weeds, the better we get at removing resources that a lot of farmland wildlife relies on. Um, I think this can be translated easily to um, we should stop fighting the weeds because A, the weeds will always win, B, we're undermining our farmland by doing so, and C, we're taking everything else down with us. Um, right, okay, that's nice. Environmentalists are always banging on about these things, but obviously weeds can be a problem in the field. Um, my first and my biggest point is that weeds are not always as much of a problem as most of us think they are. I'm going to get on to why this is in the next few slides. Um, but I think it's also important to bear in mind that weeds have positive functions as well, both for sustaining um, soil quality and farm productivity, um, and also for uh, biodiversity and ecosystem function. And I think we should always bear in mind the question of when trying to get rid of the weeds, like trying to get that last bit of black grass out or the last thistle or something, when is the cost of doing that in terms of the money that you're spending on control, the time that goes into it, and the loss of the ecosystem function that some weeds can be providing, when does that cost more than having some weeds there? Right, so this is the question of not all weeds are as competitive as we think all the time. Um, here's the first piece of evidence from um, an experiment at Rothamsted Research. What this graph shows is along the bottom, we have the number of weed species in a plot increasing. And on the, um, the y-axis, this up here, so this is the yield loss or the diff caused by weeds or the difference between plots in which herbicides were used and in which no weed control was done. So what you can see is that when you only have, say, five to ten weed species in a field, the yield loss is sitting up at about 70%. But by the time you have um, 15 to 20, in this experiment it went down to about 30%. So what that's telling us is that weed diversity, that the more different types of weed you have in the field, the less competitive they tend to be with the crop. Um, recently, some French scientists dug further into this concept. Um, what they had is a long-term experiment with lots of different cropping systems. And over time, those different cropping systems had led to different weed communities, to different groups of species of weeds that existed under these different systems. They went into each system and each weed community, and they took one plot, well, I think they, they replicated, but they had plots where they, had, they took all the weeds out. So these were zero weed plots. There was not a single weed left. And they had plots where they did nothing at all, no weed management. And then they compared the yield loss between the weed unweeded and the zero weed plots. Um, their first finding, if you look at all the weed communities together, 30% yield loss on average between um, the unweeded and the zero weed plots. That's pretty normal, that's what we see in general on average everywhere, that weeds, when not controlled, tend to cause around 30% yield loss. However, the interesting bit is when you get into the differences between the different weed communities. So they identified six different weed com communities, so six different groupings of species of weeds, and out of those six, 
Four of these communities decreased yield, as we might expect. Some of them were worse than others. What's really interesting is that two of these communities had no effect on yield whatsoever. So there was no difference in yield between plots where they'd done absolutely no weed management and where they'd removed every single weed. Yield loss in the crop decreased um, as weed diversity increased, but was not strongly related to weed density, which I think goes against what most of us would normally expect. Um, in addition to that trend, the different types of weeds played a role, so the yield loss was highest in communities that were dominated by big, tall, fast-growing, climbing weeds, and they were lowest where there was a diversity of slower-growing, shorter plants. So, what that tells us is that for weeds, the question, for yield loss with weeds, the question is not how weedy is the field, it is which weeds do we have and how many different types of weeds do we have. Exactly the same question is important for biodiversity support. So, I mean, basically a field full of black grass is not, any, it's not really that much good to anybody. But if you have a field that's full of hopefully a healthy crop as well as, um, you know, 20 or so different weed species, then that's great for soil function, for microbes, for insects, for birds. So, I would say that the, yeah, the future aim of weed science and management should be that we want farming systems that are resistant to outbreaks of problematic weeds but we want them to foster a community of diverse weeds that are beneficial to our farms and the environment and don't get in the way of cropping too much. So, how do we get there? That's the big question. Um, I think the easiest way to start is to look at those problematic weeds. What are the weeds that cause the most problems? And these are the weeds that compete with your crops, generally because they want the same resources at the same time as the crop, or they're better at getting to those resources before the crop can. So our system should be designed to suppress these types of weeds whilst allowing a diversity of other less problematic weeds to persist. So I thought the easiest way to explain this, um, or like sort of how we get to the right thing, is to show what goes wrong with our systems at the moment. Um, so this slide shows kind of a simplified conventional crop life cycle um, where, we have, where we sow the weed on the left and as it grows, through the season to the right. The weed control events are shown by those lightning bolts and the labels illustrate the different types of management that might go on. If we look at what happens to the weeds throughout that life cycle. You sow your crop, you get some weeds come up. Then you think, hey, crop's not doing so well, maybe it needs some fertilizer. So you put that down, maybe it's synthetic nitrogen. That's one type of nitrogen. So the weeds like nitrogen as well, and particular weeds will work better with different forms of nitrogen. Um, you've probably put synthetic nitrogen down because you know your crop responds well to it, and certain types of weeds will respond well to that as well. So some weeds are already doing better than other weeds. Then you come along and you do some selective weed control, whether that's a selective herbicide or whether it's um, into row weeding. So you're either selecting for weeds with different metabolisms to the crop or with different growth forms or that grow in different places to the crop. So the next thing that happens is you lose some of that weed diversity. Um, but the weeds that can survive that control, they've survived it. So say this is uh, herbicide resistant black grass and you're a no-till um, uh, but chemical using farmer, you're kind of stuffed. Like there is your black grass, there's nothing you can do about it. Um, if you happen to get some nicer weeds coming in at the end of the season, oops, went too fast, um, a lot of weeds that come at the end of the season do tend to be less competitive as they establish when the crop, after the crop, so they're using resources that the crop's not so bothered about. Um, if you have a lethal harvest, then those are going to disappear from your system at harvest because they will die before they've seeded. Um, then if we look at if we do the same thing every year, so in your first year you ended up with some black grass, you couldn't control it so it's seeded, next year you're just going to have lots of black grass. Um, it likes the fertilizer that you put on because uh, it behaves similarly to the crop and it, it doesn't care that you're controlling it so you're just going to end up with lots of black grass. So these first two points are that if you always try to um, penalize weeds that behave differently to your crop, you will end up with weeds that mimic your crop and want the same resources at the same time, and weeds that can survive the control. The third thing to think about is um, everything that our management does to the environment that weeds exist in. So, for example, if you've sown a poorly competitive crop, you've fertilized it, you've sprayed it with pesticides and fungicides, then what you've done is created a perfect environment for weeds. 
They're going to love it. They've got no competition to worry about. There's no stress because it's well fertilized or irrigated. There are no enemies because you killed them all with pesticides. So the seed predators are gone, the herbivores are gone. Um, and there's no pathogens either because the fungicides took care of that. Obviously, it's important to protect our crops, but maybe we need to think a little bit about the extent to which we're doing that and the effects that it's having um, on these unwanted organisms like weeds. So, oh, sorry, yes, uh, if you do that, you get lots of very happy weeds. Um, and the only thing they have to worry about is the control that you're using. So it's much easier for them to adapt, so to develop herbicide resistance or to develop way, like different growth forms to avoid mowing or tillage. So the key points from those slides are that um, a repetitive, strong control effort will only remove diversity, but it will not stop problematic weeds that can survive the control from becoming more and more abundant. And those tend to be the worst weeds that compete most with the crops. Also, on top of that, if you have a resource-rich, enemy-free environment, your weeds are going to love it. So what do we do instead? I think I'm going to run through these quite quickly because I saw my time coming up at the back. Um, um, I would say, so we, you've probably all heard of integrated weed management. Um, through this research we came up with um, integrated weed management plus, basically. So it's taking those principles of diverse weed management systems and taking them a bit further to make them more effective. I'll go through these one by one. Um, number one is we want to increase diversity in all its forms. What do I mean by that? Everything that you can think of. All of the crops, the management, everything going on in the landscape, everything going on in the soil. Where possible, we want to increase the diversity in both time and space. Why do we want to do that? The first one um, that I kind of covered in the slide before is that where you're changing the type and timing of practices every year, then you're unlikely to favor the same weed species every year, so you should be resistant to those problematic species getting out of control every year. Um, and the second thing is the more spatial diversity you have, typically the more um, sort of wild diversity you have that's likely to help suppress those weeds as well. And there's less favorable habitat out there. If you've got a weed that loves being with wheat, if not that much of the landscape is wheat, that weed can't grow its population so much and its seeds are unlikely to land in another favorable environment. So spatial and temporal diversity is key. How you do that is everything that you have available on the farm, mix it up as much as you can. But a key thing is that we want to be doing different things in different years. Don't try to mix everything up and do everything in the same year. And that brings us to the second uh, principle, which is to use little hammers, not sledgehammers. So I think um, integrated weed management is often referred to as using lots of little hammers to target weeds at different points of their life cycle. But I think what we now know is that the really key bit of that is that these are little hammers, they're not sledgehammers. Um, and that means that we shouldn't be trying to kill all of the weeds at the same time, every time. We should be trying to do soft, well not soft, uh, not completely soft, because you still need to get rid of some weeds, um, things in different years that act in different ways, ways to target different groups of weeds. And by doing this, you avoid creating strong selection pressure for those particularly problematic crop mimicking competitive weeds. Um, how do we do this? Yeah, multiple soft tactics that vary between years. What those tactics are will depend on what type of farming system you have, what tools are available to you, um, yeah, anything you can think of. I can't really give you all these answers right now, but let's talk later in the weed surgery. Um, and another great way to get uh, to do this is to increase the diversity, because every element of diversity um, is changing the environment slightly, whether you're growing a different crop that's changing the conditions, or you have more seed di different types of seed predators that are out there helping to suppress different types of weed. Um, principle number three, if the thing works, oh, precision control, sorry, it's a great little hammer. Right, um, number three is to minimize resource availability. If you have lots of free resources like water nutrients, weeds love it, they're going to grow. More than that, um, you're selecting for weeds that don't really care about being stress tolerant. You're selecting for ones that are just like, yeah, I'll take all those resources and grow really fast. These are the ones that tend to be a real problem with the crops. Um, so that's not helpful. Um, and so ways to get around this are basically to reduce the sort of flush of resources that go into the environment. So if you can use slower release forms of fertilization, if you can place the fertilizer and any irrigation very precisely so that the crop is more likely to get it than the weeds, 
And if you're using competitive crops and crop mixtures, then the crops are more likely to be more effective at capturing those resources before the weeds can. Last but not least, we should take advantage of the positive effects of weeds. Um, I promise you that they are doing good things, and even if it's not always obvious um, at the time, why would we do this? Why would we not do this? Um, and how do we do this? The best way is to manage for a diverse weed community, because we know that that increases the chances of more biodiversity, more positive ecosystem functions. And that brings me to the end, and a fire alarm. <laughs> What is the point where we all get up and run away? <laughs> okay, it's good. So just to quickly summarise, the key points of the talk are that however we do it, we need to work out how to live with weeds. Um, we want farming systems that are resistant to problematic weeds, but which promote positive weeds. Um, and I think if we follow these four principles of weed management, we'll go a long way towards getting there. And thank you for listening.